Moving SpaceX to another country is a stupid idea. Regardless of where you go, you're gonna run into these same problems. And if he goes north from Boca Chica, he's moving further and further away from the equator. So you click this video and you wanna know why moving SpaceX just across the border to Mexico is not really that feasible. In today's episode, I've enlisted the help of Angry Astronaut to help us break down why it's not as simple as just moving Starbase to a new location, another country like Mexico, or even somewhere else in the continental United States. Do you still think that it's gonna be easier to get the green light in Florida than Texas? I do, yes. That's my personal opinion, however, and I think a very strong opinion could go the other way. We're also going to have a little bit of a debate and a two-part video. So in part one, I'm going to explain to you why I think SpaceX should keep their focus here in Texas. I think that they should continue to try and launch in Texas. However, Angry has a very different opinion, and he thinks that they should move their focus to Florida. I guess we should back up just by saying that your video that you made about the po possible delay with Fish and Wildlife Service could be waiting until next year to see Starship fly again, which is a bummer. You made that video and I made a post about it on X and to my surprise, Elon responded um, saying that this is unacceptable. Right. And after that, there was a lot of you know discussion about, well, gosh, they should just move right across the border to Mexico. Yeah. They should just start launching in Florida immediately. Why don't they get those oil rigs back? And I, I think that, you know, we want to maybe explain some of the reasons why it's just it's just not that easy. Um, well, it all depends. Let's talk about the dumbest uh, scenario first. OK, let's talk about the scenario of let's move it to Mexico and get away from the FAA. Assuming that that sort of thing is is even possible, let's let's just assume that you go to Mexico, everything's hunky dory. They don't care how many of their citizens you blow up. Go ahead and launch all the rockets you want to. You want. Let's assume that that can actually happen. First of all, a lot of SpaceX's revenue, I mean, lots of revenue comes from the U.S. military and from NASA, insane amounts of it. And if you move operations to a different country, that violates all kinds of restrictions. ITAR restrictions, of course, being the most significant of those. Um, the military will freak out. As a matter of fact, they simply will not permit their cargoes to be launched um, from other nations, except under very, very specific circumstances. And those circumstances include the FAA having jurisdiction over the launches. I'll give you an example. In Saxavord, Saxavord, of course, was eager to get that U.S. launch money. Um, they got uh, Astro, not been very successful, but they've got ABL, other American companies that are looking to launch from Saxavord. They have a launch pad, launch pad Elizabeth, dedicated to American um, flight. And that launch pad is under ITAR restrictions and FAA jurisdiction. As a matter of fact, British citizens aren't even allowed anywhere near it. So if Elon wants that U.S. military revenue, and if he wants to keep flying missions to the ISS um, using Crew Dragon and all the money that brings him, to say nothing of all of the NASA exploration contracts, if he wants any of that, he cannot move to another country can't do it. So if he writes off all those billions of dollars, then what that means is, is that, you know, he'll be relying, you know, on, on contracts with other nations, which, you know, maybe, you know, he can make a pretty good living from, from other countries launching through him, although nowhere near as lucrative, or he'll be relying on his own revenue and his own revenue is way more restrictive than it's ever been in the past because he sunk tens of billions of dollars into buying twitter so he just can't afford to do it not moving to another country okay so why don't we just move it to a different state in the united states well there's a reason that boca chica as well as puerto rico were some of the options and the locations that spacex was looking at we have to be close to the equator, so there aren't many other options in the continental United States. That's just not an option. Regardless of where you go, 
you're going to run into these same problems. And if he goes north from Boca Chica, he's moving further and further away from the equator. That's why Boca was selected in the first place. And actually, NASA did a lot of research prior to that. Before SpaceX broke ground in Texas, they were weighing multiple options with no guarantee of the Lone Star State as the winner. At that time, it was not a given. They were also explore exploring Florida, they were also exploring um, maybe perhaps doing the launch site in Puerto Rico, um, also in Georgia. So it was never a given. Trying to determine um, where would be a good place to build another spaceport, a secondary Cape Canaveral. And Boca came up as an ideal location because of its proximity to the equator and also because it has open ocean right next to it. Um, so, you know, you're gonna lose all of that and move to another location that most probably has a lot of the same issues. You know, a lot of people saying not in my backyard, a lot of environmental concerns, at least right now in Boca Chica, you know, he has a local population, the majority of which at least seem to be conditionally supportive of SpaceX. Well, and also, I mean, look at how much they've developed Starbase in the past, what, 10 years? So, mm -hmm. you know, obviously there's there's the factor of them having to reconstruct a, a brand new Starbase, which will take even more time, but then also these, you know, billions of dollars worth of contracts that they're all of a sudden losing out on or having to find, find some other option, so. Now, we do know that SpaceX was planning on potentially launching and landing from converted oil rigs, and they actually had two oil rigs in their possession that they ended up selling off. This is something that some of you have posed as a solution and Angry thinks, yeah, that still could be a good idea. It's hard to know exactly what happened behind the scenes. And then there's the other argument that I've seen from people. There's a couple, there's there's oil rigs, okay? Mm -hmm. why, why not get those back in the picture? Yeah, um, I think they should really. Here, of course, you know, Starship is colossal, okay? So, and this is one of the reasons why the first two oil rigs they purchased weren't gonna work. They really need a huge, huge platform to launch off of simply because, you know, Starship is, is that big and it's gonna take a lot of money and it's gonna take a lot of time before any of that becomes practical. But I do think they should start working on that. I didn't really understand why they abandoned that idea after all, because they acquired, what was it, Phobos and Deimos? Right. Phobos and Deimos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they acquired them and then they just sold them. Do, do you know exactly why? I think they took a long, hard look at the engineering involved with it. I, I think that, you know, Elon may have bought them on a whim, thinking that maybe we can combine the two of them together, you know, and launch, because there's no way they could have launched a Starship off of just one of them. SpaceX began building a launch pad in Florida almost two years ago. 39A is a hollowed spaceflight ground, and Elon said it is no place more deserving of a Starship launch pad. We'll have similar but improved ground systems and tower to Starbase. Now, SpaceX has made a lot of progress on that launch pad in Florida, of course, in the last two years, but that doesn't mean that the Cape is gonna be any easier to get a green light than down in Texas. But a lot of environmental groups here in Texas want SpaceX to move to Florida. The American Bird Conservancy cited declining population levels of migratory birds in addition to impacts on other local species, and they were asking SpaceX to move Starship from Boca Chica to Cape Canaveral. The president of the Conservancy said SpaceX operations continue to damage important coastal bird habitats. We believe that Cape Canaveral offers a much lower environmental impact option and is underutilized with less than one launch per month currently, despite having six active launch pads and more pads that could be made available. And to give you some more historical background, SpaceX broke ground in Boca Chica in 2014, so almost a decade ago, although infrastructure down at Starbase started ramping up in 2018. Now, we've known for a long time that SpaceX has planned to have R&D, research and development here in Texas, and then once Starship was operational, they would move those operations to Florida. But Starship is nowhere near operational. I feel like we're going to see an identical situation to what we saw with Falcon 1, which is the reason why SpaceX had to start 
practicing with Falcon 1 all the way in the remote area of Kwajalein Atoll in the U.S. Marshall Islands. SpaceX tried to get the green light to launch Falcon 1 from Vandenberg, but Vandenberg said, no way, we are not gonna have you put our established pads at risk experimenting with something so new. And I think we're gonna see the same thing with Starship. Unfortunately, the first launch on April 20th, 2023 did not go without a hitch. In fact, I have one of the pieces of concrete from the pad that blew all over the place. So I don't really think that it's gonna be any easier, even if they have the equipment and the infrastructure ready to go in Florida to get the green light. They have a lot at stake there, I would say even more at stake here in Texas. I mean, I've read the environmental um, study that's been done for, um, for Cape Canaveral. Um, they've approved it at this point. However, not unconditionally, there is a big problem. And that is, of course, um, Pad 39A, and the and the threat that a, a an exploding starship would present to Pad 39A, and therefore to Crew Dragon, um, ISS transportation, all of that could be put at risk. Um, and they they want to see you know what might happen with that. So yeah, now of course Elon is saying he's going to build a wall in between the two. Um, maybe that'll work. Um, but that is the only real hurdle um, that we're looking at with Cape Canaveral, which in my opinion is a lot less significant than the hurdles we're looking at uh, trying to launch um, from uh, trying to launch from Boca. That's my perspective anyway. It would take one pad anomaly at Cape Canaveral if they significantly damaged pad 39A in the process, then NASA would ixnay um starship for a long time from cape canaveral if not forever i mean that is a worst case scenario from there so yeah that's definitely an argu argument to make is nasa doesn't want mega rockets taken off right next to pad 39a right well and you just think about what the addition of spacex in in south texas has done for the community i mean it has really really provided for this struggling community. I got to know Jessica Tetro pretty well, who was running for mayor and mm -hmm. she was there in the very beginning. And I mean, it has just really helped out the, the school system and in providing people jobs. It's kind of hiked up the real estate prices, but it has definitely changed that area, I think for the better. And so it would really be a shame to make that investment and lose it. I just Again, like though, on my side of the argument, the people of Titusville are far more prepared and and far better, you know, suited to deal with a starship um, pad anomaly, a starship explosion that causes damage that throws debris into the middle of Titusville, that sort of thing. They they're better suited to deal with that than the people of Port Isabel and South Padre Island. I think that that will scare the hell out of them. So, right. but that's again, the argument from my side. <laughs> right, right. What do you think about, I feel like some people have said that, you know, Elon is partially to blame for this, for rushing the process and not completing this environmental review before they started, I don't know, everything else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, 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 uh, when I heard about the fact that he responded to your tweet and all that, oh, that's ridiculous and all this stuff. And I'm, you know, my, how do you not know this? Either? How are you not aware of this? So, you know, yeah, I think that they pushed the, the whole deluge system into operation without consulting with anybody. And that's going to be a big problem. Um, I think the Fish and Wildlife Service, they stuck their necks out for that April 20th launch by without doing a full-fledged environmental study, which from their side of the argument really is what they should have done. But they didn't. They, they went forward with the PEA, um, you know, and now, you know, after that happened and things occurred on April 20th that weren't supposed to happen, now they have to say, okay, are we going to do this again? Are we, because if we do, if we do green light this, you know, really easily, like we did the first time around, we're really kind of sabotaging our responsibilities here. We're not living up to our obligations. 
because you know Fish and Wildlife Service doesn't give a damn about space. What is the main difference between programmatic environmental assessment, the PEA, or this environmental study? Yeah, environmental studies, they, they look at every single little detail. I mean, they, they get out, you know, they, they, they have to get out independent um, environmentalists, independent, uh, you know, just people who really know the, uh, know the area and know the, the wildlife, know their ecosystem in detail. And all of that needs to be very, very thoroughly studied in every potential environmental impact that uh, that Starship could bring to the region needs to be thoroughly studied. Those studies take time. Uh, those, you know, there's a lot of analysis that needs to go into those kinds of studies um, for these, for, for this organ, these organizations to do their due diligence, to do everything that they're supposed to do. And just to be clear, they've done it once before. This environmental study has already been carried out for Starbase, but that was way back when they were only looking at launching Falcon 9s or at most Falcon heavies and Falcon heavies were only supposed to be launching a couple times a year, you know, at most yeah. and not mega rockets like Starship. So the fact that the, you know, that the FAA and especially the FWS allowed things to proceed without another environmental study, they, they definitely did SpaceX a favor. So Angry does agree with me that they should continue their R&D in Texas, but he thinks that they should set their sights on Florida for launches. Yeah, and, and honestly, I do not think that uh, that SpaceX's um, investment should be moved. I, I think that there's a lot, regardless of whether they launch from there or not, because launch is a very small part of what they're doing there. I mean, they're building starships like crazy they're testing them they're improving them they're doing all this stuff with the raptors that they bring down um, from their other facilities in texas i mean they have a lot of activity that goes on there every single day that has nothing to do with launching starships um so yeah they definitely should move from there um i just you know my feeling is is you know, maybe they ought to reconsider the whole launch issue um but then again you know yeah you know they could run into problems you know there's no nearby launch pad in it at you know at uh, boca chica that's going to be endangered by starship so you know that's a problem that exists at the cape that does not exist uh does not exist at, at boca either way it sounds like we may be in for a bit of a wait thanks to the fish and wildlife review that needs to be conducted we're not even sure where exactly they are in the process, but they could take up to 135 days to do that portion of the review. So we have the FAA as well as the Fish and Wildlife Service that need to give their green light. SpaceX needs to get an entirely new launch license, and these things take time. What do you think about this other claim? Because I, you know, I'm reading the comments about Elon's reply. Obviously, got a lot of attention. Of we'll just launch and pay the fine. It would be worse than that. It'd be, it's not a matter of fines. Um, if the FAA does not green light a launch and they go anyway, they'll put a moratorium on all future launches and arrest Elon and everybody else involved if they try to move forward. You can't just go for it heedless of public safety and everything else and just ignore the FAA and expect that there aren't going to be very serious consequences. However, okay, so, you know, we are breaking up this into two parts. Do you mm -hmm. still think that it's going to be easier to get the green light in Florida than Texas? I do, yes. That's my personal opinion, however, and I think a very strong opinion could go the other way. I think that the, you know, NASA is probably way more concerned about the safety of Pad 39A and all the current day activities that they're doing. Right. Versus the versus the long term consequences of screwing up Starship. I kind of feel that that NASA is going to be very hesitant to, you know, to put the the kibosh on Starship, essentially. And uh, because Artemis three will not happen or, you know, maybe if they change Artemis three to a lunar gateway mission, certainly Artemis four will not happen. 
without um, Starship. They don't have another alternative. And believe me, I've talked forever about how stupid that is. They really <laughs> needed a simpler, more straightforward lunar lander in case Starship didn't work. Instead, they chose, oh God, we don't want to get sued by Jeff. And so they, you know, went with this really ambitious, reusable, you know, sustainable landing system, which looks great on paper. We're not going to see a damn thing from it for at least 10 years, if not longer. So yeah, that's, you know, I tend to think that NASA is not going to totally sabotage Starship because that sabotage is Artemis. Um, but at the same time, are they going to risk blowing up at 39A? That, that's pretty bad too. So yeah, you can, you, we can argue two sides of it. You can right. say, hey, no way are they going to risk at 39A until they know for sure what might happen. You know, they want to see Starship blow up in Boca Chica before they want to see Starship blow up at the Cape. Where I'm at. So, you know, so yeah, I mean, there are very powerful arguments to be made on your side, I think. So there's my side of it. I think that they should stay in Texas and focus on what they built down at Starbase. And I think there is still opportunity for them to launch here in Texas and polish the Starship program. But if you want to know more about why Angry <laughs> thinks otherwise, you think that they should focus their efforts in Florida. And I think that as far as launch is concerned, they definitely need to look a lot more seriously at the Cape. And I'm looking forward to telling you guys all about it soon. So go like and subscribe to Angry's channel. Thanks so much, Ellie. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you again to Angry Astronaut for collaborating with me on this video. I hope that you will check out his part two. He always puts out great content and he's really knowledgeable. And I want to thank Angry for making that video, keeping you guys up to date about the delay that we are probably going to see with the Fish and Wildlife Service. He is really cranking out that content. And if I hadn't have seen that video, I wouldn't have made that post on X and Elon wouldn't have responded saying that this is unacceptable. So I want to know what you guys think in the comments. Of course, you're going to have to watch angry side of it, but do you think that SpaceX should still focus on launching from here in Texas with all of the investment that they've made here in South Texas over the last decade? Or do you think that it is time to focus their efforts for launching Starship in Florida on the Space Coast? I want to know what you think in the comments. So leave a comment below and thank you so much for watching Ellie in Space. Thank you for getting me to over 75,000 subscribers. It is just crazy and it feels like a big milestone. And of course, I couldn't have done it without you. So thank you and I'll see you in the next video.